In the last video you saw me in the mountains looking for the chamois and trying to take some nice pictures and hopefully giving you some insights. Um, and while the trip was not completely successful, I still managed with quite some images on my memory card. And now is basically the second part of the photography workflow. And this would be to import the pictures from the card, to sort them, organize them, um, edit the one I like and finally export and share them. And I also wanted to give you a bit of an insight in how I'm doing this. So yeah, this is what this video is about. Stay tuned. So the first thing I'm doing home is basically taking out the battery and already putting this in the charger so I'm ready for the next shoot. And then also taking out the memory card and putting this into a card reader. I'm usually using the CF Express cards since they are way faster than the SD cards. And then I'm importing from this card reader to an external SSD that I have attached to my MacBook. Um, I just prefer this over importing from the camera directly over a USB cable. I found it not only to be way faster but also more reliable and this especially holds true for large video files where I had some problems with uh, file formats that my Mac was not able to read anymore after I imported from the camera but when importing from the card they were just fine. So yeah that's the way I go. So usually I just create a new folder for every import. So this could be the date and then like a location or the subject in this case like 2020-06 because it was June and then Shamwa and Shamwa 1 because this was the, in the first card I imported and as you might recall from the last video I was shooting with both of my R5 so I also have images on two different cards and I don't want to mix them up in one folder because it can be that then you have the same file names in one folder at least if you have your camera set up the same way from the file naming scheme uh, I have them slightly differently so that I also know just by looking at the file name which camera it was but yeah anyway I'm trying to just keep different folders for me it's easier and after importing the pictures on my external SSD I usually copy them to a second place such as my um, personal server just that I know they are stored safely in two locations so when I afterwards take out the memory card of the card reader and put it back in the camera I know that I can go ahead and format the card without having like a not so nice feeling about the integrity of my images. And then for actually culling and sorting the images I'm using a, pro a program called FastDraw Viewer. I think I paid around 30 bucks for it uh, once and now you have afterwards you can have it for a lifetime. And the advantage of this application over Photoshop, Lightroom or um, Capture One is for me that it's just way faster. I can zoom in into the raw files one to one without any lag. You can see this here in a short demo. And if I come home with so many so many shots from the animals this is could otherwise really take a long time and here I can just go in and then go through all the pictures um, and that's basically what I'm doing now I just customized my keyboard in a way that I, that I like it that I have in my case for example the X key for rejecting the images and then yeah I basically go through there I mostly reject the images I don't like um, I do one round basically of reviewing and then afterwards I might do another round and another. As you can see right now I have around 350 images in this folder. I would say when I'm down to around 50 images I might say okay that's good enough and I will import them in Capture One which you will see later. One small note here is you can also give star ratings and color flags to the, to the pictures and these will also be imported in Capture One or Lightroom. It's the same format, so this will perfectly be recognized. As you can see by the change of my outfit, it took me a bit, but I finally managed to reduce the amount of images to 27 on the second day. I'm now importing them in Capture One. I already selected the folder. I'm Im always importing to the same folder on my hard drive, which is called Nature Pictures. And for the 
I make a subfolder format every time I import and this is one subfolder for the year and then a second subfolder for year, month and day. For me this just works best. You need to figure out what works for you. It could also be that you sort by like the excursions or trips you do. So in this case 2022, France, Chamois or whatever. Um, I'm not backing the pictures up here in Capture One because as soon as they are imported uh, I have another system that basically takes care of that part. I'm also not renaming them, not assigning any metadata because I'm already doing this in camera. And I think that's it. So basically I can just select all the pictures here, import them. So the next step is to organize the pictures a bit. Um, I know that many people use keywords. I've been doing the same for a couple of years, especially with Lightroom. Um, the nice thing is you can also have hierarchical keywords and everything. Um, however, I found that with Capture One they seem to be a bit slow when I was uh, searching for specific keywords. So I switched to another system which is just um, the collections. And you can see all the collections here on the left side. I'm apologizing, they're in German. But the way it works is usually I select all the pictures of one species, in this case the chamois. And I just drag them to chamois. And then they are stored there. And what I want to do now is just edit one of the images. So I think I will go with one of these here. So the first thing I usually do is crop it a bit to have a better idea of how it should look like in the end. I like that there is a bit of surroundings around the chamois but it was a bit too much before. I usually leave more, si more space in the direction where the animal is looking. And as you can see here I did not do the best job with the exposure. It's a bit dark. So I will just especially bring down, bring up a bit the, the general exposure here, but not too much. I like that the background is a bit dark actually, maybe well a third of a stop. And then here the bright parts, I want to make them glow a bit more. And here one thing to keep in mind is or keep an eye on is that you're not uh, doing this too much and overexposing certain areas. So I can just let them show here. I think it's, I have my own keyboard shortcuts. It's something I really enjoy about Capture One that you can customize everything. But you have here the exposure warning, which for me is now to H for highlights. So I will just take here the highlights a tiny bit down again. I think this doesn't look too bad. I will increase a bit the general contrast of the picture. And here at least I prefer not to overdo things. So I rather have a picture that looks not too contrasty, but I feel has still the same look from there. Um, one thing I have the feeling like is not showing here super well is that it was actually kind of a yellowish reddish light that we had on this morning. So I'm trying to adjust this here a tiny bit with the white balance and the tint. One option if I want to improve it a bit um, more specifically would just be to go to the red parts of the image and increase them a bit or the orange. Because if I increase overall saturation, I'm also increasing the grass too much and that's not something I want to do. I think that's overall not too bad. I still think the face of the chamois is a bit too bright. So what I'm doing is here uh, doing a, ma a new layer, which is basically covering the whole image and then doing a so-called luminosity mask where I uh, specify here which uh, range is uh, selected. So you can see now in red, it's just the face of the chamois. It's just the brightest tones. I can make here the transition a bit smoother and apply this. And now whatever I do to the picture, so if I dial down the exposure a bit or the highlights, it's only affecting these areas. And I think by this it looks already way better. I might increase the structure here a bit, just that it has a bit more sharpness there. And actually I think this is a good point. Sharpness I could, if I wanted, I mean for internet it doesn't matter, but let's assume I would like to print one thing I could do is also take a brush and just go roughly a bit over the face of the chamois, which I think it lacks a tiny bit sharpness. Um, yeah, it's not, it's not bad, but I feel it could, 
could use a bit more. I can also let me show where I'm painting here the mask and just really roughly now because I don't want to waste your time and it's also not so important. Uh, select this, um, go to the details tab here and increase the sharpening amount a bit. One last thing I want to change a bit is around the eye. So I will make another layer. Uh, at some point it might be useful to actually um, name the layers for later. And this last one would be the eye. So what I'm doing here is just selecting a rather small brush and just carefully painting over the eye of the chamois. This doesn't look too bad. And then increasing here a bit the brightness and contrast. I would not overdo it, otherwise it looks a bit artificial. And you can see if I activate it, deactivate this, it makes the eye pop a bit more. As I said, I already think this is a bit too much for my taste, so I will just take the opacity of this layer a bit back. And now I think it, we just changed it a tiny bit, but in my opinion, it's still a noticeable change without changing too much. So let's assume I'm finished with editing this picture. Um, the next thing I usually do is just um, give it a green label, because for me, I have in my workflow, green means finished. And let's say I don't only want to import these pictures, but all Shamua pictures because I want to update my website gallery or something like this. So I'm navigating to Shamua, which if you want to learn some German, is called Gemse. Um, I have here the filter to only show the green flagged images. I'm selecting all and maybe I say, I don't know, I don't like this here too much actually. They're not going so well on my gallery, I think, um, but the others are fine. So I'm going for export. And here you can have these export recipes where you can kind of store all the settings for the export. So what I'm doing here for my website is I'm going to the, to the folder galleries that I have in my website folder. And then it's automatically doing a subfolder um, based on the name of the collection. So this one is called Shamwa, so it will automatically do this, which is very nice for the, for the whole handling afterwards. Um, I also specified the naming. I choose a rather not so good quality just to save a bit of, I may have a small file size for quicker loading on the website. And if you click here on show all options, you can do way more. So I put a bit of output sharpening. I'm removing the GPS coordinates on the picture that I share generally. Um, not an issue with the R5 since it's not having GPS, but some pictures here are also with my taken with my 5D Mark IV, which did have GPS. And then finally, I'm just yeah, exporting these 14 images. Takes a couple of seconds and then they're ready to upload. And of course, all these export settings, they really depend on what you want to do with the picture afterwards. If you want to print, of course, you want to export them in the highest quality possible. But if you just want to use them for the web, I would really recommend to, first of all, adjust the sharpening a bit and make them a bit smaller. You can also add a watermark if you want, etc., etc. So that was it with this second part of the uh, Shamua video. If you want more about the digital organization and image editing, I think the channel could still use a bit more subscribers. So if you liked it, please also subscribe to the channel and activate all notifications. And then we will hopefully see each other soon. Bye.